welcome to today's video where I'll be reacting to a video I believe I did in like 2015 something around that time whatever the date is I'll put up on the screen but this is an old one I have not actually watched in ages it was originally called why leopard geckos don't require special lighting I my opinions have changed on this over the years I know some of my old videos really say like do not use UV I was so against it but the thing with re the reptile hobby you have to approach it with an open mind and when there is new information that is backed up by evidence it's important that we embrace it so we are you know giving our reptiles the best life they can possibly have there's one thing of them just surviving and there's another of them actually thriving now saying that if you don't use the uv but you are still supplementing them that is fine but i'm more reacting to the fact that i was so against it so this video i haven't seen in ages so um yeah, we're gonna watch it if it suddenly skips that might be because i am rambling in it which i'm doing right now i know so if it does skip that is why so let's let's have a look okay i've had quite a few videos recently but not i love how my pajama bottoms and my lens cap are in the frame by the way if you've watched my equipment video what equipment i use back in the day i only had my dslr i could not see what i was filming i probably had to focus the video on the bed hence why this is in focus and i just had to sit there and hope for the best so many about my geckos which obviously this channel is all about probably one of the topics that are most mentioned in the comments so back in the day, I think one of my first ever videos I did, I talked about like, it was like a guide to looking after your leopard gecko or something. And where I, my geckos didn't have UVB or anything, I had a comment saying, I hope one day you're old and crippled and in pain and then you know how your leopard geckos feel. Now prior to having a YouTube channel, I'd owned leopard geckos for about six years. I had my supplements down to a T. I'd never had any sort of skeletal issues or any, any health issues with my geckos. Um, so it's important if you're not using UV that you do get the supplements right. Even when you are using UV, obviously get the supplements right, but um, make sure you have everything right. But I did get a lot of abuse for not using UV. Funnily enough, um, now I do use UV, I got someone once saying it's clear that using UV is bad for your geckos and all of this sort of stuff. You can't win. When it comes to reptiles especially, you cannot win. <coughs> did not cut that out. Amazing. <laughs> Okay, so basically, I'm going to start off saying, obviously, if you're keeping your gecko in a room that has hardly any light in coming through, like natural light, then fair enough, you will need to probably use light. Um, so I know a lot of people, especially in America, you have big basements and some people have reptile rooms, which is awesome. I would love to have that. But unfortunately, natural light doesn't come through, so they can't distinguish day from night. In that way, yeah, you definitely need some kind of light. If you don't want to use UV, you don't want anything or add in any heat, then use an LED. Now in the wild, leopard geckos live in very harsh, rocky um habitats it's not actually like sand or even like the eco earth i use i love how even back then i was saying it's not sand and i actually do also say it's not like the eco earth but i think the substrate i use now earth mix arid is definitely more like the substrate they'll use or at least the elements are come into contact with amongst the rocks and everything um so yeah but um yeah it's all very rocky and dry in the day, they usually hide down in caves or under, like, beneath rocks and everything to keep away from extreme temperatures. This is true in a way, but I think the problem is back then, and even now to this day, people still refer to leopard geckos as nocturnal, and they're not. They're crepuscular, meaning they're out dawn and evening. So, dusk and dawn, I meant. <laughs> dusk and dawn, yes. So that's when the UV is lower, but it's enough for them, all they need. Um... If you go out at dusk and dawn, it's not going to be the same as midday sun. And also, when you use a UV light, even if they're hiding their hide, they might put out a, a foot or a tail or their head. They get as much as they need, and that's a good thing because they can actually do it themselves. You don't. There's no guesswork. It's up to the animal. And unlike a lot of reptiles, they're not basking lizards. Um. Yeah, they're not basking in the same way as a bearded dragon, but they probably do at dawn and dusk. So, um, obviously you get um, lights for bearded dragons and 
I'm trying to think. <laughs> this is why I write most of my videos. I haven't written this one, but a lot of the time I write my videos so I can be kind of concise, otherwise I get rambly like this. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure about skinks, but you know, there are a lot of lizards that do need likes because they bask and that's how they get their heat and they require the certain vitamin they can get from the light. Vitamin D. How did I not know that then? Like I knew that, I just think I lost my words. But in the, in the wild... Um... Can we just take a moment to say how young Diego looks here? Like I didn't realise leopard gecko leopard geckos age so much but Diego looks so young. Um, geckos do not bask, they get out of the sun and in the day they hide under to get, because you do still get heat underneath, obviously the rocks above are heating up but not, um, not the same. I'm not really making sense here but basically what I should have said is they don't go out in midday sun where the UV is really high, the temperature's too hot. But if I would have known that back then, I would have said dusk and dawn because they're crepuscular. Warm and give them energy. And then at night, people are saying, oh, you need a light at night because they won't be able to see when they hunt. They're evolved to hunt at Oh, uh, interesting fact for any other animal YouTubers out there. If you use the E word, sometimes people freak out. <laughs> But let, let's say adapted. They've uh, adapted. They have the, these eyes. You see your gecko's eyes at night. They're massive pupils, so they can actually hunt at night. So darkness is actually important for their day-night cycle, and they need darkness, and they actually can probably hunt better in the dark. I know with crested geckos if you have them out and like it's light they don't jump so much but when the lights are lower it's darker I swear they're more active I know it's not the same animal but still I'm like rambling here this video isn't very good also the light because my camera doesn't adjust to light as you can see Diego is glowing but yeah I think this one was rambly. I could have done this a lot better and got my point across. I'm kind of annoyed some of my old videos do have like do not use UV light in um, because in actual fact it's very be beneficial. I'll leave a link to a video I did about UVB and UVA. There are two different things um, because I do definitely feel like they're beneficial. When I try to explain supplements to people I wish they had a UV light because what I use is UV and Earth Pro A and Earth Pro C8 Pro Magnesium and the that calcium goes in their tank and then I use Earth Pro A and then I sometimes use a calcium if I feel like they can have a boost but all of that is natural non-toxic it can't be over supplemented the UV they do on their own they can bask as much or as little as they want it's important when you use UV though that you get the right percentage you Put it install it correctly because that can obviously damage their eyes or they could get too close and burn themselves so make sure you install it co correctly at the right height um and it, yeah just when you right i'm going to leave links to stuff that will help you with this where you can actually go and figure out what your animal whatever animal is what it requires what percentage what height to put it at because i definitely see the benefits in it it makes supplementing so much easier and I honestly would definitely recommend it. Some people have concerns about albinos and UV. I think there are some animals where selfishly they have been sort of selective bred to be like completely white or scaleless or have other issues that do rip away their natural protection from UV. So you might have to use a lower percentage. Um, I think normal albinos are okay, just make sure you have lots of hides, but yeah. Um, my opinion on UV has definitely changed over the years, and I kind of don't want to clear this up because this was an old video which is kind of absolutely rubbish. Um, but I did want to react to this because I wanted to show that reptile care and opinions and around their care can change and evolve, and it's important that we are willing to move with the times because like 10 or so years ago things that people would suggest doing i remember i have a book from about 2003 when i started researching leopard geckos it tells you to use calcium sand um there are so many things that say don't use uv and i just feel like we need to just improve our care in general like a lot of people are moving towards bioactive tanks which i think is awesome if i could keep a succulent alive i definitely would in my leopard geckos tanks i definitely feel like a future 
possible um, idea that I may do for the leopard geckos is actually maybe put deep heat projectors or something similar in their tank instead of heat mats, but that's for the future. That's something I think we're heading towards right now in the vivarium. I can see Diego looking at me filming. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know actually, what is something you used to do if you've been in the reptile hobby for a while that you used to do that now looking back you're like, why did I do that? That was so bad. Anyway, thank you for watching guys and goodbye.